Uh, I would like to invite the Yuyang Lin to give you a speech. So Yuyang is a neonatric argument application engineer at the Sense SimSense. So a PSA, a PAS department in the Chengdu. She obtained her degrees from the ETH, the, the SUS in the 2021. She is now she's responsible for the developing the spiking the neural network for the low dimension signal and he's the collaboration real time and the low powered application based on the low powered SY low chip. So Yung Wong, thanks for joining to give the speech. So your yeah, the speech topic is the SY low uh, uh, sub mini what the low dimension signal the neural network processing. So it's handed over to you. Thanks, Harden. Thanks everyone for joining. And today I'm going to share a low power and low dimensional signal neuromorphic processor called Xylo. And let me just briefly introduce our company, Sensense. We focus on the research and development of neuromorphic intelligence based on over 20 years of world's leading experiments at University of Zurich and EDH Zurich. Our company involves both sensing and computing in the neuromorphic intelligence. And here are the outlines of today's slides. Firstly, I'll briefly introduce the neuromorphic computing and its difference to the standard deep learning. On the second part, I'll introduce the Xylo processor, which is the low dimension, which is targeted and the low dimensional signal. And lastly, I'll share our recent outcomes on the application on this chip. The neuromorphic computing is inspired by the structure and operations of the brain. It uses the neuron-like operations as the computational basis. And communication in biological neural system is actually done by spi spikes of electricity passing from one neuron to several partners by synapses. But neurons in our brain actually fire sparsely and connect to each other sparsely, so which means they're energy efficient. And neuromorphic models spiking neural network, SNN, is more focused on the real functioning of the neuro biological neural system system. And similar to deep learning, training as an can also be achieved by error back propagation, but the two can be very different in many aspects. Firstly, uh, the standard deep learning often runs on PC plus CPU or GPU accelerators, while the SNN often run on specialized hardware. And the SNN receives the sparse and discrete input signals we call them spikes. It can work asynchronously and continuously in time. While the standard DNN often carry dense parameters, we can, be, we can observe the high sparsity of parameter structures in the SNN. And on the left-hand side is the standard AN neuron. We often calculate, calculate in this way that we receive input signals and multiply the weights with it then apply an activation function to the product. While for uh, SNN neuron, the input spikes are com coming into the system and converted into the synaptic inputs. The synaptic inputs are then added to the internal state we call the member potential. And once the membrane potential exceeds a thresholding value, it fires. And there are many different mechanics mechanics and or dynamics in the SN neuron, we just introduced one, which is leaky integrated and fire neuron, the leaf neuron that was also implemented in our chip. You can see from this figure that the membrane potential gradually uh, rises in time. It rises non-linearly because it, it has a, a leakage through time. And once it reaches the value of one, it fires and resets. And our company produced two different neuromorphic computing chips and different uh, targeted and different signals. One is the dynamic vision signal that integrates an event-based camera and a neuromorphic processor in a single die. We call it SPAC. 
And the other one is silo that is targeted at low dimensional signals, such as audio signals. And the silo is our leading role today. And silo brings the flexibility of low dimensional signal processing to microwatt energy budget. And it provides the capabilities for real time detection. It's low cost and lightweight. And we can see from these slides that a wide range of low dimensional sensors are expected to be connected to a silo chip, like audio sensors, EEG, EMG sensors, thermal pressure sensors, or IMU sensors, and so on. And, and based on the silo, we develop an audio dedicated chip called Xylo Audio which integrates an analog audio front end to the chip. The analog audio front end, AFE, is used, used as a spike encoder to encode the analog, analog audios into the spikes, then transmitted the spikes to the SN core to process, and we can get the output events. These two parts can be adjusted by, <clears throat> by the control logic. And this diagram shows the detailed structure of the AFE. The audio signals are input into the system by the microphone, then pass through a low noise amplifier to reduce noise effects. Then followed by 16 bypass filter banks that map the signals into corresponding the frequency bands. Then followed by rectification and even production. The AFE converts the analog of input audio signals into, into asynchronous events. And this, this figure shows the outputs and example of the AFE outputs. The first two fig figures are the raw audios and the figure on the bottom is the AFE outputs. The channels corresponding to different frequency bands of the filter bank. And the blue dots are, are the spikes provided by the AFE. And so far we introduced uh, the AFE and Xylo Audio has another important part, which is the Xylo chip. And this is a digital SN architecture in the Xylo processor. It's a reconfigurable device able to implement networks with up to 16 input channels, 1,000 hidden neurons, and eight output neurons. The 16 input channels corresponding to the 16 output channels of the AFE parts. And we can flexibly implement the feed forward or recurrent network structures in, in Xylo shape. And hidden neurons implement the LIF leaf neuron model. Each spike neuron is a digital leaf neuron with up to two 16 bit synaptic states and a 16 bit membrane state with integer logic. Her neuron synaptic and membrane time constants are configurable as well as individual spiking pressure. We also have a well-developed software pipeline to support our design. From the data preprocessing, we can use the tonic library. And for model building, training, or simulation, we can use rock pool or synapse library. And for the model deployment to hardware, we implemented the Samla package. And I'll show a detailed deployment pipeline here. On the first part, uh, with the rock pool, we can easily define and build our own network. Then we can uh, use the rock pool to train our networks. It supports different frameworks like Torch or JAX. And after that, we convert the network to a graph and map it to hardware architecture. Then we quantize the, those parameters and finally deploy to the hardware. And the application of neuromorphic silo can be extended to many fields. 
For example, we can find it to do with livestock monitoring, like we put ear tags on pigs to monitor its states and analyze its behavior. And we can also do it in smart toy industry, have an audio sync classification and behavior analysis, and so on. And I will show a baby crying demo, baby crying detection demo that using the silo audio, which integrates an AFE and a microphone on board. And in order to play the video, I think I should share the sound of my device. We have the baby crying, the baby crying picture showing the UI. We're talking, nothing happens. We're talking and we Output the detection results. And we also apply that to a snoring detection them to detect the uh, human snoring. And on the left hand side is a real time snoring sound. And once we repeatedly hearing that instantaneous sound, we will make the final detection as the snoring. Can you see? Snoring. <laughs> Yeah, the final detection I is snoring. And I will show some segments for where Hello, hello. Talking. Can you hear me? Peekaboo, I found you. Hey, Siri. Boom, 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 and uh, I'll show another audio application that is the Avent Audio Sync Classification to classify whether a sound it takes place at home, at cafe, in the street, or in the car. And, and the results are shown on the left. This is sound fragments at home, and we're showing the specs are uh, output and the home label. I will return the in Okay. And so far, I I introduced the audio applications on Zyla. As I mentioned before, that the Zyla processor can also be used to IMU data. And this is a demo to classify the human behavior, whether the person is sitting, sneezing, jumping, coughing, or falling. And uh, we, we just, for the data recording, we put two devices on the volunteers for data recording. One placed on the chest and the other one placed on the wrists. And I will show the results here. The true label is coughing, and we can see that um, the silo correctly classified. And here the true label is sitting, it's also correctly classified. Okay. And this is another example of the biosignal application, visualizing the HFO high frequency oscillation the anomaly uh, in the ellipsis surgery. It's it's a very common it's a common practice to visualize men in the ellipsis surgery. So we try to identify those HFO in the EEG signals, and we will show that the uh, net, network SNN in Zyla is able to respond to HFO and remains silent during the artifacts. 
So uh, the input signals is a mixture of the artifacts and the EG signals. And you just see the, uh, its response in the output neurons. This is an artifact and nothing happens with HFO. We can see high response in the output neurons. And the blue area is, shows the values below, below the thresholds. And you can see it with artifacts, it looks, it's not respond because it has low value below the threshold. And with HFO, there's high response in the output neurons. Okay. And um, Silo is a low power product for the application I mentioned. The power consumption is actually only around 200 to 300 microwatts. Roughly. Yeah, for the baby crying, snoring, ambient audio scene classification, human behavior analysis, and HFO detection. And we also try to make many scientists engineers to access our technology. We build the Xylo audio development kit. You can easily um, work, work with, with our software and build your own model on this. And we have placed a, a MEMS microphone and plus some power monitor unit on it. And it's capable of de detecting almost any audio features. If you're interested, just scan it. Um, thanks everyone. Thank you for your time. Thanks, thanks to the to Yu Yang. So that is great. This is amazing. So, so uh, uh, I, I have a question on the the technology. So first thing, so when you when you detecting the the baby crying, so should should we do the, some of the collective before before the sampling? So how many is that? Is that is that is that the purely the neural network base? So you need to the, collect a lot of the sampling and do the training first, right? Yeah, the baby crying, uh, the baby crying detection demo is based on a fully SN uh, yes. network. Okay, so my question is that uh, if that uh, the 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 baby from the different region, they may have a different tone. So is that the, yeah. is that the, is that doable or that this as a should be do the the retraining? Yeah, actually, we collect the data set from the open source open source data set, and we collect multiple ones, and that includes both the data from uh, the data of baby crying from different countries. I think. Okay, got it. So a uh, couple of questions here. So the first one is the the Andy Andy asking. So if I buy the if I, uh, the development kit, I can try to. I can try to do the baby crying demo by myself, right? Yes. Okay. The, no. Okay, that's doable, right? Yeah, okay. because our baby crying demo is actually uh, placed on this double kit. Okay, cool. Another question from the Lee Sanfong. So he asking that. So how much is the power the consumption of the the SLO? So do you have a roughly number regarding the power? Uh, so, sorry, can you repeat the is it the power consumption of it's what? power consumption of the 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 S the 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 SLO, the 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 solution you you bring in. Okay, um, I can show you this one. The power consumption is for the all um, demos I showed is very low, from about two hundred to three hundred microwatts. This is the cheap power consumption. I see. So it's it's the, okay, got it. So it's the active power, right? It's a it's a yeah yeah. Really it's, the, okay. it's inference power. Okay, got it. So another question for, for the for whatever the the numenorphic process support as for the unleashed learning. Uh, sorry, sorry again. I I, I guess the question from from the, the attendee I'm asking, so for the loss of process, they can support 
the, the, the training online. So not be built in the device. Yeah, uh, but, but now for this double kit, we cannot, uh, we, we just train the network and and place the network on this board. So okay. um, no onboard training. Okay, got it. So Andy also asking about where's the link they can they can they can show that web board. So probably sure. you can provide that off the line. Okay. Yeah, show sure, show sure. the rock pool. The 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 they they the they Andy asking about the development board where they can find the more more information the, some of the web link. Uh yes. Um maybe you can scan uh the QR code here. This is for our company and mm -hmm. there are a lot of information of our products showing our company and also in our company's website, since then. I see. Got it. So the the Li Sang asking without why why we ch change the digital SNN and not using the, the dynam dynamic uh, DYNA PSE. Uh, so uh, the question is that he why they changed the, to the digital SNN is why not use the DYNA PSE. So I'm sorry, I don't know what this term means. Um, yeah, um, because I, I'm, I'm not so focused on the hardware. I, okay. I work on the algorithm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And one more question from the. Okay, we got it. We answered that. So, what, okay. So, yeah, one question, Odin. Sorry. Um, one question is asked by Arindam. He said, Great talk. I see your SNNIC is synchronous. Single. What are the advantages over other async approaches like IBM, True North, for example? Yeah, the the, the current uh, the current hardware, the Xyloship is uh, is synchronous one, and in the future, actually, we we, are, we will develop an asynchronous chip design. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks for your question. Thanks for your answer. That's very clear. So, uh, thank you again to Yu Yong. So you gave the the speech. Uh, that was amazing, especially for the the snowing. So I know a lot of people they have the snowing problem. So yes, yeah, that'd be very useful. A final thank you to our sp sponsors. So once again, thank you, um, Edge Impulse as a premier sponsor, Qualcomm, Cintiat, Deeplight, ClickTech, Renaissance. Um, actually, what I'll do is I will go through because we, we, it will cover all the, the sponsors in detail. So the premier sponsor, Edge Impulse, um, for those who have uh, like to try a simple approach to, um, I guess, development on tiny mail devices, Edge Impulse is a great solution for you. Um, executive sponsors, Qualcomm AI Research, again, uh, a great organization that has most of the chips in most of the um, platforms around the world, um, and as well as some of their new software applications. Sintiat making edge AI a reality. Platinum sponsors, DeepLight, uh, fastest video analytics solutions on ARM CPUs. ClickerTech, global IIT solutions. Renesas, uh, I guess, enabling a next generation of AI powered solutions that will revolutionize every industry sector. Sony Semiconductors Corporation. Gold sponsors, analog devices, where what if becomes what is. ARM, um, again, ARM, um, um, a large chipset provider as well, and they also have their own social um, nights, which you can join if you want to be more involved in the ARM community. Photohub, uh, making over-the-air firmware models uh, updates simple and accessible, uh, especially important with all the uh, sensors that require updates. Microsoft, uh, providing, I guess, edge computing and the, the, the capabilities to integrate into um, edge or IoT or tiny ML solutions into uh, the Azure platform. NXP, uh, again, a great hardware provider which integrates with uh, the TinyML solutions. SenseML, an analytics toolkit suite for, um, for I guess, TinyML. STM Microelectronics, which provides extensive solutions to make machine learning easy. Engineering Exceptional Synaptics, uh, Engineering Exceptional Experiences. And Silver Sponsors, AIZIP, Aon Devices, EMSA, Greenwaves, 
Gravity, IBM, Imagimob, Atomus, Data AI, OctoML, Prophecy, Quixo, Rixon, SAP, Silicon Labs, Stream Analyzer, TDK. Um, I guess before I finish off, though, if, if people are interested in sponsoring, please reach out to the team. Um, we're always happy to have uh, more sponsors because it's with this sponsorship we can run such, such events. Um, I just want to say a big thank you once again to the whole team. Um, and thank you once again to the people who presented. Um, your content is key to making these communities grow. We're hoping uh, next year we can have this in person. Uh, don't forget, as we mentioned earlier, uh, next, next year we'll be having the summit um, in San Fran. Um, but thank you. Thank you for all your help and uh, hopefully see you at the next TinyMail session. Thank you, everyone.